Hey, this is David De Hilster. I'm a critical thinker, science dissident, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science. Something your university professor won't tell you, the mass media won't tell you, and certainly those science evangelists will not tell you. Today I'm going to talk about, instead of ranting and raving about mainstream going amok, which is, spends a, <laughs> a lot to talk about, I'm going to talk about a person just the opposite. A person who I really admire, somebody who I uh, found uh, over a year ago uh, through his books, and especially the book called The Higgs Fake, and that is the very brave and very um, cantankerous Mr. and Doctor, he is a doctor, Alexander Unseger. He is a theoretical physicist who's fighting the mainstream. Imagine that. You can imagine he's not really really popular. You can see his uh, uh, websites right here. I'm showing you that. Alexander Unsiger. Uh, I have talked to him on several occasions. In fact, uh, invited him to our conf conference. He's going to be at our conference again this year. Uh, we'll talk about that and show you that a little, little bit later. But who is this guy? He is a real physicist who is out there who do, does not believe in the particle uh, model that is complete is the standard model today, the particle zoo. In fact, I'm going to show you some of his work on that. He's uh, published a couple books, and you can see here the most interesting papers are found 50 years uh, in journals 50 years old. Contemporary physics appears to be rather ignorant of history. There are lots of unsolved yet fundamental problems in physics. I totally agree with that. This one I don't agree with. Yes, Einstein's theories can be understood. Yes, they no, they can't. They're paradoxical, they're impossible to understand. But that's just a small point with me, with him, because you can't do everything. Uh, you can fight your fight. Everyone can't fight everything at once. But he certainly is a refreshing, wonderful voice in the area of theoretical physics. And he believes that all of it should be thrown out starting around 1930. You hear me talk about that a lot, and I agree with him, except I agree that it should be thrown out even more. Neutrinos don't exist, and um, uh, some other ideas. But regardless, he is a hero of mine, and here are a lot of us in the community, because he is out there talking with Nobel Prize laureates, confronting them. And we'll look a little bit of that today. Let's take a look at some of his books uh, that you can uh, take a look at. Um, he, I'm getting here. This latest book's called The Einstein's Lost Keys, How We Overlook the Best Idea of the 20th Century. Um, it's about uh, some of Einstein's ideas uh, but uh, that we've overlooked. Uh, of course, um, I don't believe Einstein's theories are correct, neither special nor general. But this is a, a little different take on things. But regardless, that's one of the books he recently uh, put out, if you're very interested. This one I really, really like a lot, and that's The Higgs Fake, How Particle Physics Physicists Fooled the Nobel Pro Committee. Let's tell the truth. The Nobel P Committee and physics is fooling everybody. They're not. It's not particle physics fooling the Nobel Committee. It's everybody fooling all the general public, including the Nobel Committee. They give out uh, prizes for things like the neutrino, which doesn't exist. They give prizes out for the Higgs boson, which doesn't exist. And they've given out many, many prizes. They just look at what's sort of in trend, and then they say, oh, this is going to be important. They already deem it important without it even being important yet. The Higgs, once it was found, was like, oh, it's important. So um, very good book. Uh, I highly re recommend it. Another one that's really great is Bankrupting Physics, How Today's Top Scientists Are Gambling Away Scientific Credibility. Obviously, this man is out there on the forefront of criticizing mainstream physics, contemporary physics, and uh, absolutely applauded for him to do that. Um, and let's take a look at, he has a, a channel. The channel is called, um, uh, let's see here, which one are we at? Uh, buh, 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 buh. Oh, we uh, will take a look at his channel, but let's take a look at uh, our uh, one of our, our organization's channel, which is the John Chappelle Natural Philosophy Society's channel. And on there we have our, our um, uh, videos. We've had uh, almost 12,000 views on all our videos over the years. Uh, we've only been around a couple of years, but even though the 
organization in another form was around over 20 years. So it's really more of 20 years, but just recently. Our biggest video is the Higgs face, a critique of modern particle physics. I made this whiteboard in, in, about the, his uh, book, and I think he's probably had links to it too, but it's gotten a lot of hits, uh, over a thousand views. And for us, that's quite, quite numerous. And of course, if you look further down, um, we actually have some other ones here. If you look down, it's our fourth biggest. It's Dr. Unsiger on uh, interpreting empirical evidence, which was a talk he gave at our conference last year, and he's going to give us another talk. So you can see that our organization, uh, the critical thinking organization of the world, uh, is uh, uh, very much following this man and his work and just give him standing ovations for what he does. I can totally forgive him for uh, staying on the Einstein train. Don't worry about that. He's fighting a bigger fight. So uh, let's take a look at something. It's, I think, uh, very interesting. Uh, which one? Okay, here's one. The neutrino uh, crisis and neutrino physics. Of course, neutrinos, I don't believe, exist. I don't know. If, I think, I'm not real sure if Dr. Unsiger thinks they exist. I think he may think they exist, but not so many forms. I disagree. That doesn't read Dr. Karazani, Dr. Unsiger, uh, another physicist, uh, a doctor of physics from Argentina my mentor. Take a look at that. But I'm not here to talk about that. I am here to talk about what he does in the beginning of his lectures in Europe. This is really telling. Let's listen to it and let's talk about this. Thanks, Thanks for attending. attending. Everybody is sure he or she, or she wants, wants to, to stay. stay. Everybody's Everybody's true, true, so we, we can, can, we can start. start. So we don't even have to talk about what's going on. He literally, when he gives talks, says that, I think, oh, not all of them, but most of his talks, uh, when they're controversial, which most of them are, he says, does anybody, you want to make sure you want to stay? You, you, you sure you want to stay? You heard the door slam. You saw a person walk out. I'm out of here. Those are people who are closed-minded, obviously, but he gives them that chance. Imagine, that's, that's what a physicist who criticizes mainstream physics has to say so people can leave. I mean, what is this, blasphemy? It's a, this is religious, folks. This has nothing to do with science. Disagreement is important. Uh, uh, I, new ideas, criticisms are very important. You need to face those. If you don't face them, you become a religion and not a science. So that was that's an interesting uh, happening here. Um, another part is how he goes and talks about uh, particle physics and what he calls, and very much so uh, Dr. Carazzani, Dr. Ricardo Carazzani is also who says, and that is uh, the particle zoo, this amazingly un, uh, unorganized mess is, as Dr. Karazani calls, a zoo of particles that we have, calling it the standard model. Of course, it isn't even a model. It should be a standard theory because there's nothing physical about this. And let's uh, see if I got this in the right place. He's uh, talking about this and uh, this particle zoo. This gives you an idea of what he's trying to fight against and throw away this standard model. We might, we might try, try to learn, learn, learn from, from examples. examples. According, According to particle physicists, the, the most simple explanation of reality is like this. Up quarks, down quarks, strange quarks, strange quarks, quarks jump quarks, bottom quarks, quarks, top quarks, 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 three colors each, electrons, muons, tauons, electron neutrinos, muon neutrinos, tau neutrinos, w bosons, z bosons, x bosons, gluons, and so on, and so on. I think they are reasonable people in particle physics. physics. And, and Rico Femi said, if I could remember all these names, I would have become a botanist. But it's really interesting. So you can see what he is, he talks about. And that is, he actually talks about this particle zoo that's been invented with all these characteristics. And in fact, we have on our website, I'm going to go there live. I uh, didn't set this one up, but I'm going to go there. Memes at naturalphilosophy.org, our website uh, for our organization. And one of these memes is him. 
and uh, I put this together, which is very, very true, and that is Dr. Ale Alexander Unsucker, physicist and author. Today we have bottomness, hypercharge, strainness, isospin. Particles are these little packages with these labels. To call a particle a conglomeration of labels is a psychological displacement of how much one has distanced themselves from reason. Basically, he's saying that what we have are invented packages of things, something that we call a particle. We have all these crazy attributes that have no physical characteristics. We don't know what the size of these things. We have no idea. We don't even know what charge is. And yet, we talk about this as standard physics. And that is just plain old crazy. Um, one of the people he interviews, and he goes out and interviews these people, are Nobel Prize winners. And he sort of, how do you say, gets them to talk, maybe not knowing exactly uh, that his politics are against a lot of this stuff, but it's very interesting. Let's take a look at one of his t uh, uh, interviews with Nobel laureate David Gross. Um, and let's listen to, here's his beginning. You can see Unsucker's real physics talk, real. There he is. He's got a nice little intro there. Welcome, Welcome to, to Real Physics. This, this is an interview with string theorist and Nobel laureate David Grass. I do not really share any views about theoretical physics with him, but uh, that particularly became obvious at the end when we talked about constructing quarks by Daniel Pickering, which I think is an excellent book about particle physics. But uh, he suddenly made a couple of interesting points, and uh, it was news to me, for example, that physics can ignore gravity. It was news to me that the quantum chromodynamics essentially contain no uncalculable numbers, as he said. It was totally news to me that Dirac, one of Dirac's large numbers, can now be calculated. And uh, it was news to me that Dirac predicted the change of the fine structure constant. I think that would have been news to Dirac too. But anyway, I think this is an interesting document about one of the most celebrated physicists of modern times. And uh, listen to yourself. And basically what he does in this interview is go and, and ask questions. And then when you hear the blah, 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 the things that really don't make sense that are self-contradicting and if you notice there he was talking about things you don't have to know know a lot about particle physics and say well I had no idea what he's saying he's basically saying well it's interesting he says X and then he says Y and he says Z and it's news to me that that that, that he said uh, W and, it, and I think Dirac would have been news to him basically he's saying he's lying about X he's lying about Y and he's lying about Z and oh also W, uh, he's not saying that specifically, but that's what he's meaning. He said, news to me is a, a polite way of saying, um, no, folks, you just say those things, but in reality, that's not true. Now, I, I can go on and, and play this. You can play through it, and if you know a little bit about particle physics, this guy is all over the place. But I think what's really interesting is to watch the end here and how he becomes very frustrated at the questions and what happens here. Could there be some other penetration, but it's not me. That's right. There's there's good Aristotle and Plato. 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 So my criteria of what is in in physics is very uh, joking and all is if it once it enters the history of the high school textbooks, it's there to stay. You know, Newton's, Newton's theory is there to stay. By, by the way, way Mr. Pickering, Newton's theory, we know it's kind of wrong, but it's, it's not going to go away. The standard model has passed, has passed such an incredible number of experimental tests. And I would suggest, Mr. Pickering, or you, go look at the data. You know, immerse yourself in the phenomenon mm -hmm. that you asked me about. 
look, look at, at what's, what's coming out of, of the trillion events per second at, at the LHC, all of which, unfortunately for them and, and for me, are incredible, with incredible precision over 20 orders of magnitude described by the standard law. So, Pickering might, might have had a point here in Derrida and, and, and that, that crown 20, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, luckily, uh, well, it doesn't today. Okay. Anyway, I, I seriously appreciate, appreciate uh, the conversation. conversation. So, he got so mad, he just sort of stormed out of there. He always compared himself to Einstein, too. He says, well, you know, Einstein thought this, and, and we think, what does that mean? I'm comparing myself to Einstein. You notice at the end, too, he was talking about, well, if it's in the, the, his, the, the textbooks, it's there to stay. Well, you know, Newton's wrong. Why? Because Einstein's right. But, you know, they're there to stay. And 20 years ago, Mr. Unsicker, what you were saying may be true, but not today. Thank goodness. We have trillions of interactions per second, trillions per second. And we have accuracy to 20 places. This is baloney. The reason it is because they've made all this up. Of course they're going to say that. Of course they have that because they've made up these arbitrary packages. They're going to look. If you look at a trillion of anything, you're going to find anything. When you smash these things together, remember, we're not seeing pieces and measuring those pieces. We're seeing trails. Trails. That means you don't see the nut or the bolt or the tire fly off the car, the car you're blowing up. You just see the trail of it. And, of course, you make all these predictions. Uh, we're going to see, we're going to have to do a drillion pajillion of them, but we're going to see this and then you find it and then you do your calculations and show that this particle there for, there it is. This is proof. And these are arbitrary packages with color, with half spins, iso spin, upness, downness, all kinds of stuff. This is absolute nonsense. And when you listen to these guys, they're arrogant. There's just so much arrogance you see. He doesn't have to say anything. Unsugar doesn't have to say anything. It's just complete arrogance. So I wanted to show you and introduce you to this man. The good thing is, is we got him at the, uh, the Chappelle Natural Philosophy Society, our annual convention, uh, convention, our conference uh, will be in British Columbia, Vancouver. He's coming along uh, and he's going to actually not going to be there, but he's going to have a video conference with us. It's going to be really interesting. He's going to talk about, I uh, can't remember what the, what the title is now, but uh, it's very interesting always to have him talk. And then we're going to have an answering question and answering system uh, session with him. And of course, we also have uh, Mr. Dan James Maxlow, in my opinion, the top geologist in the world. I know some of my geology friends don't believe that but I do and uh, that's pretty cool and of course uh, we are very happy to be uh, to have this man in our community and our dissonant world he uh, he doesn't take what people say on faith which is remember that one guy says immerse yourself in this stuff immerse yourself read the physics Bible the standard model and you too will become a believer you too will see that we are right and that we prove this to an immense amount of decimal points and trillions of times a second you too just immerse yourself basically it's a religion it's totally a religion and in congratulations mr. doctor doctor mr. doctor doctor Alexander Unsicker we applaud you I applaud you. Thousands of us around the world applaud you. Actually, many more than this because I believe that the majority of people don't buy all into this. So, um, thank you. Thank you so much. And if you don't know him, get his books, read his books, watch his videos. If you know German, even better. Uh, you, he has uh, many of them in German. But if you don't, take a look on our website. We have our, uh, the, in our YouTube channel, we have the. Um, uh, our YouTube about him in our YouTube channel, John Chappelle. If you, all you have to do is say, put in John Chappelle. There we go. You can see it there. And on there you will find uh, down uh, in the, on our, oh, there it is, the page. 
and then of course you can go down further and you can see uh, the Higgs part. That little guy will tell you a little bit about especially the Higgs fake and also uh, you can go to other the other video of his little talk about with us last year. So thank you. Thank you Dr. Unsiger. Even though we will convert you the Earth is expanding. I'm not sure. I think you may be still up in the air with that one. That is for sure, for certain, as well as Einstein's relativities are not working. They don't work. You should immerse yourself, <laughs> Mr. Dr. Dr. Unsker. But thank you so much. And remember, just like Dr. Unsker, myself, and all those critical think thinkers, don't take what others say on faith. Stay critical. Stay thinking. I'm David D. Hilster, your science therapist. Ciao for now.